I do want to see the holy fuck. This is 51 minutes long. What's up, you little freaks? Though? Welcome back to this place, aka my channel, aka the Noah Sampson channel. So recently, I made a video on a street interview channel that I thought was a bit odd. The video was called Incel Street Interviews, and in it, I talked about how a lot of the questions they asked in these interviews were loaded, narrative-based, and how the community that these videos have fostered is not exactly a great place to be if you're a lady, or if you're a man for that matter, or anyone, because of the way that it fosters misogynistic rhetoric. In my video, I played some clips of a YouTuber called Sneeko reacting to this interview channel when I was introducing the general response to this content from the Manosphere. And this very same Sneeko ended up stumbling upon my video while he was live streaming and he reacted to it. For those who don't know, Sneeko is a YouTuber who, until recently, was most known for his street interview style content. These videos are from his main channel with 1.2 million subscribers and he's been uploading on there for almost 10 years. But recently he started a and Tate are based as fuck, said the 14 year old chatter. On God, you are never gonna get pussy if you truly believe that. I promise you. Please stop it right now. If you're, if your main goal, I'm, I'm speaking to you right now. I'm communicating to you right now. I promise you, bro. I promise you, you are never gonna get pussy. Do not do this, okay? Do not do this. These motherfuckers are hurting you like little sheep. You are going to be permanently bitchless, okay? You are permanently stuck in in bitchless territory. Do you understand? You are never getting pussy, bro. Even fucking Jake Paul knows. Even Jake Paul, he sucks. And even he knows you are permanently stuck in virgin territory if you fucking think that these guys are based. Okay? Straight up. Don't do that. Old Sneeko video, please at least read title. What the fuck? Should the U.S. interview in Syria, Black Ops 2 commentary? They just had to stop it by bringing in the United Nations peacemakers, and they had to take him out because it was just way too dangerous and violent for them to even be able to have an effect in Syria. And so basically that's it. It's been going on for a long time, but since March of 2011, it's become a huge issue. And what I'm trying to discuss is whether it's a, it's you, the United States should intervene in Syria. And the people who are saying yes do have a good argument. It's it's for a good, um, it's for a good cause, and it's because I'm not what I'm saying. I'm I'm refuting the statement. I'm refuting this and saying that the United States should not get involved in Syria. What I'm not refuting is the fact that Al Assad's government is very corrupt and it should be stopped. What I'm trying to argue is that the U.S. has always gotten involved in issues that has nothing to do with itself. Think of the Vietnam War. Think of all the communism, the, all the wars that started from communism in the past 100 years that the U.S. has started. The U.S. should, by, by no means, the U.S. has already invested $700 million into Syria. That's already enough. We should not have to send in troops. That's, that's their issue. I know that. What happened? So fucking based at like the age of 10. Like what, what happened? I, I don't know how old he is, but. He was like a based isolationist king. Like he was like, he was out here playing Allah Surya Bashar. And then now he's like, now he's like fucking, I mean, I guess it's because he's just doing the, he's trying to make money. Really? That's what it is. Remember when this was going on and Rogan was like the biggest anti-war military industrial complex guy? Yeah, no, this is him. This is the same guy. He grew up and learned how smarter he is than leftists. Yeah, he's just fucking based and so smart. No, this isn't Logan Paul. It's uh, Nico. This dude who's like constantly saying that I should debate him, but I'm afraid of him or something, but I don't really think about him at all. Ah. <sighs> I've, I've watched some of his videos. He's been in the chat before. Um, he 
the second channel called Schneeko, where he does more live stream react style content. This channel has gained 400 of its 500,000 subscribers in the last 30 days, so it's growing quite rapidly. I think this is partly due to his presence on TikTok, where his clips go viral fairly often. But more consequentially, this rise is correlated with Sneeko's seeming adherence to Manosphere rhetoric, with much of the content having red pill, conservative, or anti-feminist themes. It was on this second channel that Sneeko reacted to my video while streaming and uploaded a cut down version of this stream to the channel yesterday as a standalone video titled Sneeko Haters Are Creepy White Knights. This, this is, is actually Sneeko had Fuentes on mentioned Hasanabi then shits get extremely anti-Semitic while Gideon laughs. What the fuck? Dude, I am not touching that. The fucking 10 foot pole. I know. I am familiar. I'm aware. There is probably nothing worse than you can do than like put a fucking white supremacist like an actual Nazi on a large platform. And some dumb motherfuckers are doing that. Okay? Some dumb motherfuckers are doing that right now, and they're dumb as fuck for it. Okay? They do not understand how fucking dumb they are for it. They think that shit's fun. Okay? They think that shit's fun. They think that is, like, okay or whatever. We're, like, going back to the fucking 2015 era. Dumb Gamergate politics. It's really, really fucked up. It's really, really stupid. And, uh, okay. Gee, a very, very good, good point. point. I am Sneeko's number, number one creepiest, creepiest hater. hater. But Sneeko's response to my video was interesting. It was fun. Okay. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to go through it and answer some of his questions and respond to some of the things that he says and see if we can all take something of value away from this. I'm going to be responding to most of his video, minus the parts where he repeats himself. So this video might end up being a bit long, but I think it could be worth it. And if you don't feel like sticking around for it, that is totally fine. Leave a like on the way out as a treat. Listen, if a Nazi doesn't have like a big audience and you have a much larger, you have a much larger audience than him. Okay. A much larger audience than him and like fans that are coming to watch you. I've made that mistake before in the past and it was really fucked up. Don't make that mistake. I didn't personally make that mistake. Um, but I, I did play a role in it in the past. Don't do it. There's no reason to do it. Let them fucking, let them straight up fucking die out. Okay. There's no reason to offer additional platforms to Nazis. They have nothing good to say, not have to hear out their ideas. No reason. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about the train ranks thing. Exactly. Where Nick Fuentes jumped last second on that. And it was not good. And for a lot of people, especially a lot of people on the internet, especially a lot of white kids, like, they don't really think about it from the perspective of, like, how harmful this might be generations because it doesn't, like, directly impact their existence. You know what I mean? They just they can just look at the the merits of debate. They can separate the art from the artist, if you will. You know, that's not. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. That's not a good thing to do. Okay. Remember when CNN just brought Richard Spencer on to talk about his white supremacy movement in a nonchalant way? I do remember. Twenty sixteen was a weird time. I thought we had moved on from said weird time. Okay. If you feel like doing that. Okay, without further ado, let's watch. I'm bored already. This guy sucks. But there's another one of these. And he went on my boy, this fucking soy boy, Noah Sampson. Went on my boy, uh, it's complicated, calling it incel street interviews. And whenever a man calls another man an incel, red flag. So Sneeko here says that it's a red flag when men call other men incels. But that raises the question, what if they're being incels? Or doing- Notice how I said don't platform this shit, and then like, 36 month subscribers immediately were like, here, let me send you the link. Hey, if you, hey, hey, are you a 36 month subscriber in the Hasanabi broadcast? Is there a little voice in the back of your head that says, oh, well, Hassan just said, don't platform this video. So what I will do is exactly the opposite of what he just said by sending you links to that video. If there's a voice like that in the back of your head, don't listen to that voice. Do the exact opposite of that voice. You will get banned. Okay? Your 36-year-old man 
and you're a 36 year old, uh, 36 month old sub. Be smarter. Be an adult. Think critically. Okay. Stop linking shit. Stop doing that. You're fucking stupid. Let's continue. Doing incel shit. We just aren't supposed to say anything because we're men? That doesn't sound like a great plan because if the onus is on women to call out this kind of behavior, why would men that actively avoid talking about it amongst themselves ever choose to believe them? Also, he does some name calling. He calls me a name here. Uh, he calls me a soy boy. For the uninitiated, soy boy is a sort of derogatory term for a weak man. Urban Dictionary defines soy boy as being an effeminate male whose feelings get hurt far too often usually resulting in some kind of pitiful retort or changing of the subject. And I must admit, he's he's got me there, okay? I am effeminate. I'm soft. I'm emotional, all right? I have a floral backdrop wallpaper in my room. I brush my teeth, and I floss, and I wash my ass. And I am sensitive, okay? I'll dip my toe into a la-la land and keep it in there until I'm crying. My feelings get hurt so often that they have visible scars on them. But I have no idea how Sneeko could possibly know any of this about me, given that we are 0.0, .0 seconds in Literally yesterday watching a video where Jordan Clipper big times a streamer. Maybe I should be nicer to my chat. Yeah, uh, I think this is not, you know, maybe take a day off because you didn't understand the overarching message of like not platforming Nazis and then long term community subs literally doing exactly that while I was in the process of describing why that's damaging to the video. But maybe he's a psychic. Let's find out. Let's see this fucking soy boy say something different. Yeah, whatever. Check out my cat. Check out my cat. I'm a grown man with a mustache. How old are you, bro? I'm 24. Um, throughout this response, he suggests that I'm 30, 34, and other different ages that I'm not, but I'm 24, which is actually right around his age, I believe. Sneeko is 23, uh, almost 24, according to Google.com's website, Google. But also here, he says that I'm a grown man with a mustache as like an insult, like grown men aren't supposed to have mustaches or something, as opposed to children. <laughs> flossing in your room alone this is, should be a red flag this dude looks like 34 you shouldn't like uh, check out my cat check out my cat oh he's nice and safe i feel comfortable with him this soy boy is a safe space glad i think one of the funniest parts about this kind of rhetoric this kind of commentary is that like not even trying hard he's just like it just feels like, what is it called? Mad Libs or whatever? Where he's just like throwing random words out there that you know people are going to respond to. Uh, soy Boy, uh, safe space. I bet you're a safe space. You're fucking feminine, dude. You're feminine safe space. I got you. Damn. Fucking own, dude. Bro, just say he's gay and move on. You literally don't have to fucking like... Dance around it. He, he just say the F word. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, the safe space. Women are safe around you. Implying that like that's a... Why is there a negative association with like women assuming that you're a safe person? Like, oh man, I fucking own this guy when I said he doesn't feel like a rapist. <laughs> just say slurs, pussy. Glad to hear that, Sneeko. I do like to keep things comfortable for everybody, so that's good. On the Noah Sampson channel, we pride ourselves on having the softest, cushiest, fattest, wettest, juiciest, grippiest echo chamber on the platform. Mamito. Her name's Bob. But if you make an Instagram for your cat, just like reevaluate your life. I'm sorry for the people who have Instagrams with cats, but like if you're a grown man with a mustache, you should not make a cat for your fucking Instagram for your cat. So I'm not really sure what his problem is with me making an Instagram for my cat, Babe. I made it mostly just because it's an easy way to keep my friends and family up to date on all the latest Babe news and events. A one-stop shop, if you will. And I know folks in the audience, you know, some of you are fans of that small furry animal critter. So yeah, it seems like a just weird- What? My rebuttal? I got nothing on that. Yeah. Don't make an Instagram for your cat. I guess. I mean, I don't really give a shit one way or the other. I'm not even going to make a joke about that. Weird thing to get hung up on, but okay. <laughs> Instagram is for cat. Goes puppy. Not to, bro, no one gives a fuck about your cat. I, I do. Okay. I like her. Okay. This part is boring. All right. Come on. Come on. I don't care about your cat either. Cat. He was not, in fact, seem like. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Babe, you hear that? He wants to eat you for cat. Wait, what? Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying. To put cooking. Huge fan. Yeah, I didn't mean I was gonna eat his cat. I meant I wanna like literally. Wait, put what? 
Okay, I was wrong. I'm going right back into it. That's actually not boring. Art gets really, really weird. He starts telling me that he wants to eat my cat. Like, eat babe. That. This cat. Trigger warning. Cat eating rhetoric. I want to eat your cat, bro. I want some Asian shit. Hey, everyone. Today... Okay. Bro, he said on some Asian shit. He said, I want to eat your cat, bro. On some Asian shit. Dude, that's funny. There's nothing more fucking alpha than being like, my race, as perceived by white people, is cat eaters. And I'm going to fucking lean into that. You know what I mean? No, he is Asian. He is. He's half Asian. He's just like, once again, can't actually fucking make jokes. You got to do the hackiest bits possible. Got to do the hackiest bits possible. Asian viewership. Wait, what? What the fuck? I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's doing that. He's going to use it. Is this a joke defense? I mean, it is just a joke. It is. I'm not even talking about like, oh man, it's racist. First and foremost, he's Asian. If he wants to make fucking like rude, insensitive jokes about his own race, like, yeah, go ahead. But it's corny as fuck. It's corny as fuck. It's hacky as fuck. And it's also additionally silly because, like, you're not even making racial jokes about Asian people. You're not even making racial jokes about Asian people that's, like, unique, interesting, compelling, that uh, doesn't fucking just, like, literally lower yourself to the lowest barrier just to get a couple fucking ha-has from a bunch of fucking cringe incel white dudes. You are the white man's dog in that point. You're just doing that. That's really silly. That's silly shit. It is. It is. It's fucked up. Bit of a stool humper joke. Oh yeah, no. It's a silly billy. It's a silly billy joke. We're going to be looking at a YouTube, Let me eat your cat. YouTube channel called Like your cat, now you're now, uh, Ayo. He goes on to clarify that when he talked about wanting to eat my cat, he was not, in fact, talking about cunnilingus with me. And I'm pretty sure he's doing this because he doesn't want to seem like gay to his audience or something. Huge fan. Chad, I didn't mean I was going to eat his cat. I meant I want to like literally put cook his cat and eat it. Like the cat, right? The one with the Instagram. I want to use it for calories. I should have said that. God damn it. Okay, well... Thank you for clarifying that. Babe, you hear that? He wants to eat you for calories. Oh no. <laughs> Looks like she's about to eat herself for calories. Why do so many women think they have the- It's the same thing I say to some of my friends who only make Jewish jokes about themselves, like stop fucking pandering to them. No, but like, there is a way to be funny when you do that, okay? There's a way to be funny when you do that. Like, I, I regularly talk about how I fucking danced on rooftops in New Jersey during 9-11, okay? That's not like, th that didn't literally happen. It's technically fucking racist to say that. Okay, it's technically Islamophobic to say that, but I'm talking about how fucking stupid that of a, of a take that is. Okay, I'm making a joke about it. Okay, do you understand? There's a difference between that and being like, "Oh, look at me! I am bomb guy! Yalla Habibi! I love exploding myself!" You know what I mean? Like that's that's the that's what he's doing. He's doing like the lowest fucking lowest barrier of entry hacky shit. Like, haha, I'm Asian. I like eating animal. I like eating domesticated pets. Is, is just, like, the hackiest thing you can do. You know? You understand? The golden pussy when every woman has one. Huh? So you think that guys want to submit to a woman? Huh? Liberals don't even think you can... You can you just gave haters so much shit to come to in just minutes? Yeah. Ask questions that don't fit their agenda. What's wrong? It's a question on his channel. 
It has to agree with you at every fucking second. So no, the questions don't have to agree with me. As I go on to point out in my video, the problem with the questions that It's Complicated asks isn't that they don't agree with me, it's that they are often loaded, containing assumptions that most people are unlikely to challenge. And the channel uses these things to develop a narrative that modern women are entitled and delusional, which is then lapped up by the audience, by people like Sneeko. This motivation and this narrative why does it feel like every male content creator is trying to piggyback off of Andrew Tate? Because it's, uh, is popping. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, misogyny is popping. Okay. Kind of on the up and up right now, very differently than, uh, past years. But also on top of that, it's, it's super easy. There's an audience of people that are like desperately looking for that. And they're not really smart either. You know what I mean? Cause it's not, they're kind of dumb. And they're just like looking for someone to agree with them. And they feel like they've been cast aside. They feel like uh, no one understands their perspective. And these guys are just like, no, 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 you're right. Society's wrong. You're right for thinking the way you're thinking. Which is, of course, ironic. Um, ironic because society thinks that way as well for the most part. There's an art teacher's post about freshman boys regurgitating Andrew Tate nonstop. I mean, they're, they're kids. Uh, I think that that's always going to ha I don't know. Part of me thinks that that's always going to happen. Like, they're kids. You know what I mean? It sucks. And I don't know what the best way to, to change that attitude is. Right? Because the problem is, like, a lot of Hollywood comes across as, like, fabricated. And it is. So, Hollywood's, uh, uh, Hollywood's, like, cool uh influencers and celebrities that are that are crafted are too they're not rugged enough and they don't translate as authentic enough for younger kids to like watch and and kind of look up to and idolize so they look to like internet content creators and there's not a lot of internet content creators out there that are like hey that's not cool you can be cool and not be like a fucking weirdo i think I mean, we've talked about this so many times, like people mistake edginess for authenticity on the internet. You know? They just think like the only way that someone can be authentic is if they're like not subscribing to the liberal media, right? And I mean, I don't subscribe to the liberal media narratives or, or the attitudes that liberal media or the best practices that liberal media wants but you know it's just uh it's still much easier to fucking get kids to agree with you if you're corresponding to pre-existing memes about women deserving less um no i'm not gonna fucking segue for the top of the hour ad break but you should subscribe for five dollars or for free because it is the top of the hour and i'm gonna run a fucking six second ad break okay nico was a nazi i don't think he is i think he do you know what he is he for no he he's just a clown like he is desperately looking for a place to fit in and he realized that the andrew tate shit he could just ride it he'd go on fresh and fit podcast and like keep building an audience and i think he is building an audience of like uh like-minded weird incel reactionaries right um uh, that's what it is it's just, he's just desperately trying to find an avenue for himself. And I think he found one that it's like kind of, kind of sticking. And now he's doing it. I used to watch Sneeko before he did all this shit, but I stopped when he made a video about how he tried to fuck one of his fans. It's so clear. It's all for crawl out. Yeah. It's definitely 2016 all over again right now. We're in the 2015 part of that era. Yeah, it sucks. Here's the woman ad break now, by the way. I hate that. narrative are both what I disagree with because they hurt everyone. They proliferate hostile potential relationship environments for women and lead men to harbor undue resentment towards potential what's his, partners, uh, what's his which username? in turn is they Sneeko? hinder their ability to form and maintain lasting, healthy relationships. What's his username? He has a different username on this platform. He's been in here before. I don't know what it is. Um... Sneak bitch? No, I don't think so. 
No, Admin Ross? No, 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 no. No, Aiden Ross does not have like a like a legitimate interest in in trafficking uh, misogynistic takes in the same way that Sneeko has like turned it into his. Um... No, when you say Admin Ross and Sneeko handshake, you're you're failing to comprehend. Aiden Ross only cares about uh, uh, the content and the cloud of it. You know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck. He, he, if like, if there was a, if there was a person who is as popular as like Andrew Tate is on TikTok and that person was a fucking socialist, Aiden Ross would have him on to be like all glory to the restoration of the, you know, USSR. Uh, he, he would come out as a fucking Maoist and shit. Like he, it's, it's, you know, the impact is still there, but there is a difference between a person who is like very willingly decided, this is my lane, this is my avenue, I'm going to continue down this pipeline, and I'm going to be like as crazy as I possibly can as I build this like media demon around myself versus Aiden Ross who doesn't give a shit about anything uh, and is just basically uh, dick riding, uh, you know, uh, people that already, and he already has his own clout, but uh, dick riding people with like uh, further clout to continue his clout. What is it? This is it. Poggers, sub chat, chat, huh? Fire fighters, Trump 2028. I love white people. Now I'm dead serious. Trump for emperor chat. Dude, your beanie. Glass combo, so dope. 100 emoji. Chat, is it a W stream or FL? He said this back in 2021, 10, 13. Nice. Manosphere is just rice gum, Jake, Logan Paul, agitative content focused on misogyny and red pilling. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Relationships. And I don't want either of those things, you know? I feel like my thesis is pretty well supported by the content of most of these interviews. But even if you disagree, I would love to hear an explanation as to how every single one of these videos' comment sections are riddled with misogynistic attitudes if there wasn't some sort of through line of misogyny on the channel. We will get more into this later, but for now, no, the issue is not as simple as the questions asked in interviews need to agree with me, because as I said, they don't. Okay, so next, Sneeko goes on to sort of speculate about potential ulterior motives that I may have for making the videos that I choose to make. Keep in mind, this is all happening within the first minute and a half of my video. Also be wary, and women, if there's any women watching this, don't you see right through the bullshit? You know that this guy's like, you know, like, hey, look at my cat. I'm a safe soy boy with the safe... This dude's trying to get pussy. But like, yeah, I'm not like those other alpha male triggering guys. Oh my God, those guys are so unsafe. Dude, this is such basic fucking analysis. It blows my mind that this is like still... Uh, still seen as like good commentary. First of all, it's just pure projection. Like you're, it's a self-report. You're saying that like this is an act that you put on specific, not because you genuinely believe it or anything, but this is an act that you yourself are putting on for clout or for other some other underlying reason. So you, your expectation is that like other people are authentically into cats, which is weird. Like you could have chosen anything else, but he's like, nah, you're a soy boy because you you have a cat. That's why because you want to be approachable. Like what the fuck? Can't, can a dude love cats? Like, I mean, I'm not the biggest cat guy, right? You know I'm a dog guy, everybody. His girl got fucked in front of him. What? No. Oh. Wait, what? Really? I feel like I... I Wait, did you guys explain this to me in the chat before and I like glanced over it? Admit it on a podcast and recommend it. Other people do that. Yeah, I recall it being mentioned here last week or so, bro. I literally, this dude occupies such a little fucking space in my mind that I, I forgot about it. That's his villain origin story. I feel like next time you guys are going to bring this up again and I'm going to fucking forget again. And then I'm going to have the same exact fucking opinion again. What is this?
what goes on in the mind of some chatters, dude? 11 month subscriber. What goes on in your mind? You're like, this is a good opportunity for this meme right now. Ha 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 ha. Come here and let's go on a picnic with my cat. In Sneeko's mind, it seems like the only reason he could see as to why a straight man like myself might want to call out other straight men in a way that I often do on my channel is because I, quote, want to get some pussy. And yes, once again, he has exposed the truth, okay? As you all know, at the end of all my videos, I do display my full real phone number in these bright big letters with a big red arrow and text that says, cute girls, please text me. I am lonely and full of soy. Okay, but jokes aside, um, Sneeko is actually referencing a real thing here and bear with me. Performative feminism by straight men in order to attract the attention of women is absolutely a thing that happens. You will find True. this talked about in many, if not all, leftist spaces in one way or another. Barack Obama famously read Marx in college in an attempt to get girls. This is a screenshot of where he talks about it from his memoir. That's also true. What's up? This is him talking. So about much shit. Oh, this <laughs> nigga. This nigga. This nigga. <laughs> let, he, this nigga allowed so his girl to get fucked so what's by the, niggas. Wow. Wow. And he's on, watching. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Hold let, on. Hey, Y'all hey. screaming. I kind of want to hear something. Like Everybody's so it's loud. Like the decibels are racing. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on. We need a who, who, who proposed? Who Bro, I love that this this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Betterhelp.com. Yeah, those dogs are barking. Proposed it. Did, was that your solution to like try and? I think it was both of our ideas. We saw something in that show, Sex Life, on Netflix. Like they went to a swinger party. Like, oh, we could do that. And especially because like, like I we do threesomes all the time, and she's not even that bisexual. So it's like she's. I kind of feel like she's putting on a show a little bit. So I'm like, if I'm able to go and have one night stands and be have an open relationship, and she can only go on dates, this is a place where she could exercise the open relationship. Like it, it should be fair that she can take other dick if I'm. Fucking other pussy. Like equality. That's equality. That, that's, that's equality. balance. So, and so equality. if it's gonna happen, man of honor. if it's gonna happen, I might as well see it, supervise it, make sure everything's Wait, okay. What? No, you didn't have to jump to that conclusion. Well, I don't. I, it's <laughs> worse. I'm right now. It's worse if I if she it happens behind my back. Like I don't want it. It's like, not. But y'all both knowing that it's happening. So it's never behind your back anymore. You just gotta know. I gotta see it. It don't need to be literally in front of you. It was literally like this so far away from me. Can you? you have a what? So, Twice. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. How close was it? That he, he, right, we're on the same bed. I was with his girl. He was with my girl. You like, was right here. on the bed? Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so what do what they call that? Like After the swim club, you get like a, a They call a that wedding odd. award. That's what they call it. You're odd. You sat on the bed while she got fucked? I I was there too. I mean, Dude, we, were, we was both. Oh, I got up. I you, got, you, you, were you fucking his girl? I, I was not fucking with her. Now. So you just sat there Indian style with your feet crossed. Y'all both just sat there. Well, she was on top of me. Girl, she was like, <laughs> she was on, and I was just like not fucking with it. And I saw her, and she was like, eh. and I was like, fuck that. And I just left the room, and then she left too. Like, luckily, I thought You're she was a gonna move stay killer, there. Dog, why you leave the room? But I, I couldn't. Like, it was. Just, I was literally having PTSD watching that. I was like having war flash. <gasps> like, I just started. Could not do it. Could not do it. So did, that, did, that, did that get you out of your cheating ways? What position? No. It was missionary. Yeah, missionary no. legs up. It like was missionary legs, legs up. up. Legs up. Yeah. Oh no! Yes. That's such a oh, crazy. No. So was he staring at her like in her eyes? Yeah, like deep eye contact. Oh no! Deep eye contact. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. Side and blue. And she deep? grabbed it. She's like, "I want you to fuck me." I was like, "Whoa!" whoa what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Were the toes like this? The toes? Yeah. Was like your toe curled? Lay straight up. If the toes ever curled. I think I saw a little curl. arch. There was a little arch in the toe. I didn't oh, know. Did they not touch you? No, no. Well, no. Okay, so let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Let me backtrack. Before, before you AO. So, so this is how it started. So uh, we go to the thing, and I'm, I'm nervous as fuck. Like, I'm like, yo, there's what mad people here. The excitement lead is crazy. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This, so, this, <laughs> let me, let me. All right. This whole party was oh, like, I'm getting nervous. Are you taking off the drink? Yeah, let me, let, let, me, let me bring it back. Bro, did he get hit with a fucking truth serum dart before he got on this podcast? Where they like... <laughs> right the fucking neck? What the fuck? Dude. Dude. If some shit like this happened, okay, okay, they'd uh, they could black bag me, okay, throw me on a fucking plane, rip my toenails one by one, okay, say that they're gonna throw me off the plane, take me to a black site facility in Chicago, where the Chicago Police Department did tortures, unsanctioned and unjustifiable tortures, continue to waterboard me, and I would not admit this, okay. Just down to the eye contact. Okay, here's the thing. What? What?
on YouTube? That's forever. That's forever. What? Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, dude. Bro. Okay, I just got to say something. You can't ever call someone a cuck after that. Because, like, that's your fetish. That's your fetish. That's, that's what you're into. And if that's what you're into, that's great. That's fine. Like, you can be into that. And that's great. I don't understand it. It's not for me. But also... But you're like calling Noah a soy boy. You know what I mean? Like you can't use the terminology. Oh my gosh, so many right wingers are like this. It's crazy. What the fuck? I think this was a defining moment for him. You can't use that term. That's his word. Yeah. Is he going to fucking cancel me for saying cuck? Because <laughs> he's like, that's my word, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Yo, manosphere people. This is not the way can have healthy relationships what the fuck that's kind of wild that he's like dude what the fuck Back, I'm, I'm literally, I had PTSD about this. Like, I had bad dreams about this for like a week. Like, I didn't know I was fucking like, what? You're turning salmon. Bro, so we're we, still we going. Shot to the party and everything, and everybody, get, like, it, for, they're having drinks, and then all of a sudden, snap, everyone's naked. And then they're fucking on the floor, on the bed, on Who's the couch. Everyone? How many people was there? There's like 40 people. There's, That's there's like, too there's many. There's like, there's like people. maybe, maybe 30, 30 to 40 That's people. That's still too many. People 15, rotate. 15 couples? Where y'all at? In a ball? Yeah, 15 ball? couples, 30 balls, yeah. Where where y'all like in a hotel this? room? <laughs> Why do you one have to room? See balls? Yeah, we're we're in one You're room. In okay. one it's a small room. room. It's a small room. Yeah, it's not even that. It's like a suite, a hotel suite. Bro, imagine the smells, dude. Oh my god, what the fuck? Stop, dude. You need yo. These dudes, <laughs> they're they're fucking brilliant content creators. Okay, I'll just say that. But they are not good friends to Sneeko. Okay, they are bad friends. <laughs> Very good content creators, very bad friends. Okay, they are not cutting his microphone. They're not saying like, oh my God, it's crazy. I don't know what happened. His microphone cut out. Actually, it, to be fair, if they cut his microphone out, like he probably, he wanted to explain it so bad that he would, probably would have grabbed the other dude's microphone and kept going like, yeah, the cock was so big. I hated it. <laughs> Um, it's, it's not very big. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a very big place. No, for real. Okay, so now you're this. cramped <laughs> in this hotel. So we're cramped in this, and I'm getting, like, like anxious. Like, I don't want to do this. And so we go alone in the bathroom, and she's, like, helping me out, like, calming me down. And then we start doing our thing in the bathroom, The door, and then the door's open. People come and start watching. This other couple comes in. <laughs> hold on, 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 hold on. We, okay. so the, the other, this couple comes in, they start watching. Have you never been to a sex party like that? I went to an orgy one time and I did not participate. I was like, nope, not for me. I watched a little bit. A couple girls came up to me. I did not go with like a girlfriend or anything. Uh, and I was not into it at all. And we left. And then I hear his girl say to the boyfriend, like lick her clit. And so while I'm like, and I literally told, I, I've told the story before. Um, it's not. Like, you watch Eyes Wide Shut, and you think, like, you have this idea from porn and from Eyes Wide Shut and shit like that, that, like, orgies are going to be, like, this, you know, cool, you know, uh, mysterious sex party, and it's not like that at all. Yeah, we, I went with a couple friends. <laughs> I went with a couple dude friends. Anyway, listen. The homies. Actually, there were some girls with us, too, that were staying at my friend's uh, house in the Hamptons. Listen, let me explain. So, we went, and I've, I've explained this before. It's not, it's not a new story. Um, in my mind, I thought, in my mind, I thought this was going to be like, uh, like a like a cool experience, you know what I mean? Maybe if I get like a little crazy, maybe if I drink a little bit, maybe I'll like hook up with a girl there, you know what I mean? Um, like, and I went there and I was like, oh shit! Without proper lighting, without proper camera angles, 
And without proper like fitness and everybody like, you know, on a strict workout and diet regimen, that shit does not look like porn at all. And on top of that, you can smell everything. It is not good. Okay? There's no cinematography. There's no mazan scene. Okay? There's no fucking angles. There's no lighting. There was a pool. Yes? Yes? It's not. Dude, human, like normal human beings, okay, just out in the wild, fucking is not like as cool or as sexy as a fucking experience as you would think, okay? Bro, you picky as hell? What do you mean? Mr. Vanilla Dom? I'm just saying it was not... It's not what you think it is. Like hitting it from the back, he lays down on the floor and starts licking her. But think about like the logistics Your of that. Dick is that close? Think to that? Of, exactly. Think about the logistics. Like his head is like under it's like six inches like his eyebrows are like tickling the bottom and i have to like move like go like that so i don't make contact because his eyebrows are like tickling <laughs> you feel what I'm, I'm like here with it like i'm trying to not touch his head and he he was completely okay with it like and, and you were too i was i'm tr i'm like here i'm like trying but you I'm, I'm, I'm joking though right i stopped i stopped like okay, before okay. i'm like i can't this is logistically this is not gonna work and so then yeah and then she asked me like, um, well, I don't know. He crawled from behind you. He he crawled from like underneath, like he he like <laughs> slid in like that and like he slid in well, between, well, your legs. between both legs. Yeah. Between your girl girl well, Bro, I, he yeah. just keeps going. What the fuck? We're standing up. I'm hitting from the back, and then he goes underneath. No, no, no. Who? It was his no. body. Was his body between <laughs> your? No, legs no, no. Or hers, 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 hers. Okay, I'm but his eyebrows sweet. were close. He was like very fearfully close. So to he me. was damn near making eye contact so with you. Well, no, because it was blocked by like the, oh your asshole by both assholes, yeah, yeah. So you make eye contact with your asshole. Yeah, then I'm like, nah. It, I started thinking about that. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So, so you pull it out. Pause, pause, pause. So, that, yeah. so you're in a hotel room with like 30, 40 people yeah, yeah. that you never your, met. Your girl is calming you down. Hey, Sneeko, chill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not in front of the Jay Z mural. <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> Not in front of the Jay Z mural. Oh no! Yeah. Some people walk in and action just starts. Like if he was like a cool dude, and if he wasn't so like insanely insecure about the way he carries himself and the dynamic between like men and women and you know heterosexual relationships, like he could be very funny. Like he could tell the story in a very funny way. And my immediate reaction. Hassan, so much content, we're not going to be able to watch it all. Also, Hassan, watch this dude talk about orgy. Okay, this is infinitely more content than, like, him saying he's going to eat fucking Noah's cat over and over again. Okay, I don't give a shit about that. I, I do give a shit about this, though. This is, this is actually good content. What the fuck are you talking about? What's happening He's outside? also attractive. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, it's, it's another... It's another one of those instances where, like... He's an attractive dude. Like, he didn't have to come out this way. You know what I mean? It's kind of sad. I had this whole tone. Was everybody fucking or did well, you Everybody. Talking? So we go to the bathroom to have privacy. Everybody else is already fucking on the bed on the oh. floor all over the place. So we go to the bathroom like, yo, this is whoa. And they yeah. found y'all in dick. there? And no, although after we start doing it, the thing, like someone opened the door and then like people watch him like, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Bathroom sex is crazy. Yeah. Okay. So then where's well, Adam22 asking Sneeko if he finds you attractive? Wait, he did? Wait, what did Sneeko say? Nico calls you ugly in the Noah video. You must respond. Yeah, okay, bro. <laughs> also, in case privacy. So then, then we go into the room. Like her and the couple. Like we're like, all right, let's switch. So I got this girl on top of me, and she's I don't know, yo. I'm just not. And my girl's right here, and she's like, eh, and I'm like, oh, yo. I'm like like feeling traumatic thoughts like seeing her 
with another person. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. To, I th but I think it's something everybody should do just to test. No! I, no. You know what? You know no! what? I, I think you should. I may smack a nigga. I, I said the same shit before. It's going to be a mad, mad, angry, mad, naked niggas in that bitch. <laughs> Bro, like, you don't want to be that couple. You, know? you, you don't want to be that I'll be that man. couple. Because. Wait, what? You don't want to be what couple? It's a, it's a sex party. Whatever happens I there. Know, I just won't go. Are you want to go. I, I think you should. I think you should go through that trauma. No. I what? think everyone should go through that trauma. I'm because be then you get a, this. This is the point. This is this is the reason you go to sex parties with your girl. Like you get to see if this is the person that you actually want to be with. Because if you enjoy sex with somebody more, if there's somebody you're more attracted to, or if you're not on the same page sexually, then it's not going to be a, a good time. But if you can go through that, bro, he's literally, dude. What the fuck? What is this like a? Is this like a CIA op? You know how like leftists will be like, oh, this guy is CIA. He's a wrecker. He's trying to ruin organizing. This guy is like a wrecker. And a CIA op for cucks. Like he like he snuck into the fucking red pill manosphere community and he's like cuck pilling everybody. He's like, bro, you just try it out, bro. One time, bro. I swear, bro, you'll like it. You'll love when another dude is tickling your balls with his with his eyelashes. <laughs> he's cuck pilled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? He gets mad when people say toxic now. This definitely changed him. Yeah, what the fuck? That's crazy. Nico will make five videos out of this. What is he going to make fucking five videos being like, that's messed up. I can't believe he called me a cuck as I described to everyone that you should be cucked. It's pretty cool. Even though he said he was traumatized and had PTSD from it. And there's nothing, listen, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're, if you're into being cucked, then hey, cool. That's your kink. You know what I mean? That's your thing. That's your shtick. But just be like, I don't know. Be chill. Be nice. This was his Syria. I much prefer this though. We, that sending in money is a good, good idea, but not, <laughs> but bringing troops in. Risking American lives for a foreign issue that has nothing to do with America is absolutely ridiculous, and we should not get like isolationist, uh, anti interventionist, serious Nico all the way back from 2013. He's popping off big time in this one, but you know, that one only gets you 1300 views. You know what I'm saying? Foreign policy king that experience, like with your partner, and like you still it was it feels stronger afterwards, like after all that, everything like we everything was like better to be honest. So, so do you still really? cheat? I mean, you know what that less, sounds fun. Less, so do less. you see, but you still cheat though. Less. So even after that, it's you not still fuck. If it's an open relationship, I don't know. Yeah, but, it's but, open. But but you, even I after that, you still fuck other women. So what are we talking about? Actually, no. It's been a while. It's been a while. Like the only time has been like just threesomes. But you still did it though. Threesomes though. I mean, like not without. I her. know, but your the your point you're making is that it's so traumatic that it actually brought us closer together because you came. It was. I'm, I'm talking just about the traumatic parts. It was a lot of it was really hey, fun. I don't want you to reopen no, this what? obvious wound, but like, what what does that feel like? No, nah, it's okay. It, it felt like somebody was like taking something from me. Like someone was violating my property. That's what it felt like. Felt like? I felt like getting robbed, like right in front of me. <laughs> like that's what it. Yeah, it's like I don't want it. Why am I looking? There's, I don't take any enjoyment from that. A lot of guys there do. A lot of the guys there, I think, are bisexual. A lot of, of the guys are, like, are into that. If you can lay in between some like dudes' fucking ass cheeks, you got to be into that a little bit. Like, there's no part of me so that wanted to do that. More other niggas in that position, just chilling, just lay. Bro, at one point I was like, so later on after the whole traumatic hotel incident, we're laying on the floor, she's riding me, and then I, I like have my eyes closed, she's riding. I open my eyes and there's just dicks like trying to point at her head, like trying to get an angle on her, like trying to get her to suck. Like, was she the baddest one in here? Yeah, that's the problem because it's oh, like yeah, kind of like DMV piece that's type people. You know the baddest like, girl in the I didn't even. We, we've been to like four of these Everybody. parties now, and I've never felt the urge to like. Fuck. Wait, he went more. He went to more? Okay, dude. All right, all right, all right, dude, dude. You can't, on the one hand, talk about opening your eyes to your girlfriend getting bukkakied and then be like, yeah, I, I fucking also went to four more of those parties. I hated it so much. Yeah, I mean, he, he likes it. Okay. Cuck piling people with his dogs out. Is that what the fucking... Oh, cuck pilling. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's cuck pilling, dude. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Holy shit. 
I mean, maybe he gets off on this though. Like, I, I feel like don't cucks enjoy it? Like when you fucking yell at them and stuff. Do you do you own a bukkake or are you brokey? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I look, look, look. Like I said, it's. I mean, if he likes it, if he likes uh, being, <laughs> if he likes getting cucked, then he likes getting cucked. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like what makes it funny is the the internal contradiction of him like presenting himself for no reason. By the way, for no reason, he doesn't need to do this. Uh, presenting himself as like a. Uh, like this, like, oh, yeah, traditional relationships, like alpha masculinity. I'm a fucking, I'm like Andrew Tate. You know what I mean? Like presenting himself like that, but then simultaneously, like secretly being like, you know, talking about how he loved getting, he loved getting cucked and, and watching his girlfriend get like four dicks on her face. You know what I mean? If he was a normal dude and if he was a friendly guy and he wasn't, uh, what he tries to present himself as right now, I'd be like, yeah, who cares? Like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever. That's his kink. Who cares? I'm a professional fan. Non guys like this are usually cucks. Oh, I've been like, we've been, a, we went to two that night and then we went to two like two nights ago. Damn, y'all be fucking. Yeah. One? We went to another one like two weeks later. Yeah. Even his homies are like, bro, that doesn't add up. Like the, the math is not adding up in this situation. Like you're, you went to two in one night, dude. You were like, you were traveling. That was a cock car carousel, dude. What the fuck? He's like, yeah, not one. That was a, what is it called? A double matinee? Like, he just. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, y you went on tour. There's also, there's two, there's like not one, but two of these fucking things. Like, I feel like you are an expert at that point. If you know not one, but two orgies happening on the same night, dude, you literally are seeking it. You're, you're searching for all the orgies. Like how many orgies are happening in a city that it's like in, in travel distance? You know what I mean? What the fuck? What makes this funny sad is that he's trying so hard to deny the situation he's openly admitting while pretending to be a gender rigid tough red pill dude. Double cock platinum with no features. Yeah. I mean, straight up no features because he said his girl, uh, his girlfriend was like the hottest girl there. So he didn't even want to fuck all the other girls. He says bullying, bullying made him a man. So I think this is just a continuation of the bullying pipeline. I think bullying made him excited. I think he likes it. But I do, I do find it pretty funny when he's like, Hassan, you say all the time that there's nothing wrong with being a hypocrite and that is human. Hassan Abi, not a fan. Yeah, no, I'm, I say it all the time. It's a part of the human condition. Okay. It is, it is definitely a, a part of the human condition to be uh, hypocritical. I don't present myself as someone who is like, who has these like rigid constructs at all. If anything, me overlooking that fact uh, that is uh, normally very consistent uh, is is straight up the what is this this you? It's about the glory hole, and now you're gonna be skittish about the sex party. Don't don't you said you wanted to have anonymous sex? I, this I, is the place. I do want to have anonymous sex. I want to have anonymous sex. I want to have a sex party. I want all. Right. I want the glory hole. I want all those Here things. What I'm having a hard time believing, though, Frank is that there is an elite secret sex society behind that door in this building. I used to run with this crew. These people are the most powerful, influential, sexiest people in Philadelphia. Well, then why are they having a goddamn orgy in such a dump then? I thought this kind of thing went down in like somebody's elegant mansion. I was looking forward to that. No, nobody's going to have an orgy in their mansion all over their nice furniture. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Well, no, it doesn't. That's a really good point. All right, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, all, right, all right, put your mask on yeah, yeah, yeah. and don't embarrass me. All right, don't embarrass yourself. Wait, I don't remember. Is there T.O. isn't there? What is the password? Orgy. Okay, 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 okay. I, I can't watch the rest of this. I feel like this is... I feel like this is going to uh, T.O.S. my ass, dude. 
Um, I want to see the rest of this. This is real life shit. Why? Because. But why? Who's proposing this? Is this you or Both her? of us. Both of us. Yeah. Both of us. It was like. A now, does she, does she feel the same way when you're fucking somebody else in front of her? Nah, she likes it. She likes oh, watching wow. that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't even. We've been to four. I've never fucked somebody else at one of these parties. So why? So why? You, Wait, so so why not? Oh, 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 How does she know she likes it? She, she hasn't I, I, seen you do it. No, she we, she seen me do it threesomes many times, but like oh. not at a, at a party. Okay. So I'm kind of confused. If you never watch Always Sunny, kind of sus. What do you mean? I love Always Sunny. I've seen that episode, I, I, but this is funnier to me than rewatching an old fucking part of Always Sunny in Philadelphia instead of currently watching someone literally describe the steps. If she if she's okay with you fucking other women. But you're not okay with her fucking. That's that's the pro it's my problem. Like that at that point, I realized no, like that's why, why I think everyone not? should do it. That's toxic masculinity. Like I should be able to get past that. No, you know, no, it's, it's not. just sex. It's just Nigga should not fuck your girl. Yeah. It's no, just it's, not. it's a sex it's party, bro. It's it's, normal. it's just sex, bro. It's it's a party with the con like if she wants to fuck somebody it's a party else. With what? If she wants to party really? with a cock in it? No, no with condoms, not cocks. So, but they all are they switching condoms? Or like just one, what? one condom you switch condoms, before. you switch condoms. You sw wait, what? No, you don't. No, like, no, like you, if you, different people use different condoms. <laughs> oh, you sure? Yes. You sure is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you, you, get, you get one so condom for entry. Fucked anybody at these parties? No. What you're saying is you willingly hold hands, walk girl into room of niggas. Bro, and the third dude had to step in for this. Like, there's a producer back there, and a third person was like, give me the mic. Like, I need to be a part of this. Well, that's it. not the only thing that happened. Like, the first time it was three pumps, and I'm like, I can't do it. Like, this is too much. He's like, oh, okay. It's like so why, if you keep, you keep going back, but you're not fucking nobody. So the, oh. Okay, I got to admit something here. Peer to Peer Podcast has more journalistic integrity than Jake Tapper. Okay? Jake Tapper talks to fucking John Bolton. Okay, and John Bolton's like, I did many coup d'etats, and Jake Tapper's like, oh, cool, let's move on. Peer-to-peer -peer podcast hears about Sneeko getting his girl fucked at a fucking orgy, and they're like, we need follow-up questions. We need to address the matter immediately. We are going to bring a cuck expert into the fucking fold. Like, they literally are like, brrr, dialing up the, the, the residential, like, uh, orgy expert to be like, which orgy did he go to? Like... They need the blueprints of the building. They are doing actual journalism. It's crazy. Yeah, they called in an expert like Pawn Stars, dude. <laughs> okay, we went, we, well, okay, so this, it's more than just that. Like, sometimes I'll be fucking her and then, like, women will slide in and start sucking her titty and stuff like that. Like, some girl will, like, grab me too. Or, like, some girls start licking, like, while we're So fucking. you like that? It's run by the AMP guys. Of course, it's pure content. Just look at Kai's streams. No, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, like, multi, like having multiple women, like, four women, that's that's pretty dope. So like, why not? Why, no, but my point is, why not just set that? Why not let that be the extent of y'all's relationship? Because, because that's, that's what I want. And, like, she's, she likes that, too. But, like, that's not. Okay. okay then. You know, she's she, it's for her pleasure as well. She, like, likes dick. You know? Okay, this is, this is, like, bro, this is, like, salvageable. He, he actually had. Like, there's, there's some parts where he's like, oh, it feels like I'm getting robbed. I didn't like it. Um, but I don't know if he doesn't like it. I think he probably likes it because he went to two in a row. But then he's also talking about, like, her pleasure. Which is, like, you know, he, he it seems like he cares about that. That's cool. That's a, you know. Oh, she likes other niggas' dicks. She likes penis, period. But no, I, get I that, like but pussy, you, period. I get that, know? but you could specifically just give her more penis. What I'm saying is she specifically want other penises. I mean, she can go without it. Like, after the first party, when I said, like, yo, Sneeko, like, it was... You're not listen, listen, question. after the first... She said she didn't have to... Like, she's like, I don't... No, it's okay. We don't need to do this anymore. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So why... why? Go yeah, I think this this screams grifter to me because, like, he's aware of toxic masculinity. He cares about the, the, the sexual preferences of his girlfriend. Is literally willing to experiment. Um, all of that is is pretty mature. Okay? Like, actually interesting that he like i think he he wanted to to come out and and talk about it he wanted to come out and talk about it but then like he got a lot of pushback and then when he got a lot of pushback he he felt like it was a shameful experience you think he's making it up no i don't think he's making it up yeah 
Because okay, the second time, which was two days ago, like it wasn't as bad. It wasn't. I two saw days it. ago is crazy. Yeah, so, you're, so you're you're opening up more to this. I'm one. I'm less traumatized now. Yeah, and I, eventually, like those people see, like yo, I talked to this one. Yeah, old- yeah. His main channel was dying before this grifter shit. I think like yeah, I think he recognized that this is an avenue, and realized this is an avenue that he could like really, really fucking ham into, and it's a contradiction. Unlike many of the other incels, he's a good looking dude. Unlike many of the other incels, he's not white. He's black and Asian, right? So um, I think, like, that contradiction suits his purposes really well. It's, it, I mean, I get it. I'm fucking, I'm a, I'm a big, beefy, six foot four, hairy Turkish dude uh, who, you know, talks about social justice and shit. Like, it's, it's almost like the opposite of that, you know, and, and I'm white. So it's almost like the opposite of that in a weird way. The difference, of course, is that I'm I'm genuine, and I think he. I don't know if he's like uh, as I don't know if he's genuine. I think he like has some of those associations because we watched earlier videos of him, where we watched earlier videos of him where you could see it, where you could, um, where you could see how he behaved. Like I think he had some because people were saying that he was. People were saying that he was like a Bernie Sanders guy, right? So I think maybe he like had some uh, positive qualities. He had some like leftist leanings. And then what ended up happening is I assume, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, he like had some toxic qualities that he kind of leaned into that he genuinely believed in. And now, uh, and now basically he is uh, fully leaning into it because it's like working for him. You know what I mean? Like he read the room and it worked for him. So now he's doing it. Old couple, they're both doctors and they show up to all these parties that go like on trips and everything. And I've seen his wife get slutted the fuck out in front of his eyes, like, like choking and everything, like smacked around. He's just watching like, yeah. And then afterwards they go home, they're in the car and everything's fine. And I'm like, but how? he likes that though. He, he said he didn't drifter, like it at first, honest, though. He said he didn't like it. should have their own 9-11 to where he is now. Like it at first. They lead it. So they're going to smack around it's, it's my girl. It's all a mental thing. Yeah, like, if somebody if, else smacks your girl, that's tough. No, that was the big thing with the first. the older videos? You mean the podcast is a turning point? No, no, no. I saw. I saw. Uh, we watched some of his videos. He had, like, some man on the street videos. I watched it, like, last year. And some of them were like a little weird. They were like a little incelly. You know what I mean? I think he like asked people about like white people. He started like leaning into that whole like, I'm a non white dude who is, um, you know, saying things that white people want to hear about like how fucking racist like uh, non white people actually are, shit like that. You know? First time, like he smacked the shit out of her and I felt pain. Like, oh God. Like, it was loud. And ugh. you could legally smack the fuck out of him. Like it's a return. sex party though Yeah I know But he smacked her though Bro Man. like that's That's the that's place You, you guys right. are going to All this violent <laughs> place You're making it into Like this whole Possessive okay, so, thing uh, Yeah he had like one. A whole Patrick Zizi goes into this I kind of I didn't want to watch this before But now that we watched you know, The cuck thing you- I might as well Just watch this as well At first I was like I don't want to give him Fucking clout But I feel like He's having that I think he's just using The same strategy as Andrew Tate To get his content around I found five channels All with the same shorts With just different fonts Same as Tate Yeah Like, originally, I know he was, like, clout farming. And, orig- uh, and, and usually with dudes like this, um, unless they already have, like, a pre-established uh, presence, I'm not going to fucking go in and, like, offer them a larger platform. Because I don't want to... Out the was he talks about it so luridly makes it obvious that he gets super into it. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with that if he's like it was based until the last few months after him and his girlfriend broke up. Why do you guys know so much about this motherfucker? Holy shit. Um Yeah, he's clout maxing and he's cuck pilled. Um, how long until the react to his video about you? Yeah, it's I mean, most likely he will make one, probably. Now that I've talked about him, because I know he's always like, 
I've seen some of the videos where it's like, yo, Hassan is like scared of debating me or whatever. No, of course not. First of all, I, I debated the original Lil Bro. You know what I mean? I don't need to, and I would like to debate the original one more time. I don't need to debate like the second, not even the second best, like the 15th best Andrew Tate clone. But, um, I mean, I, I, I would. As a bisexual man, I can assure you that there's no way he didn't have a little bit of dick at those parties. <laughs> Maybe. You debated the tater. Now it's time for the tot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like fucking debating the 17th place, uh, uh, you know, swim meet person. But anyway, regardless. Fresh and Fit said you back down on the debate. I, I don't know anything about these people. I've never communicated with the Fresh and Fit people. I've said I'm down to debate them, but they've kind of fallen off, if I'm being honest. So I feel like at that point, it's like, you know, not really. Like, whichever one is the supposed to be the, the, the bald one needs to go to Turkey, okay? He needs to fix the crown on his head. I mean, that shit is like, I feel like that would really open up uh, his eyes a little bit more. I think he would be like a way, I think he'd be like a, like a happier person. The Fed. Yeah. Fresh and Fed. I really do wish I debated them when they were popping off though. Maybe we'll see. But I have said that I'm willing to debate them. I'm not going to fucking fly to Florida and be around them, though. Like, why the fuck would I do that? Um, about wars in 2020, arguing over 2015 content. Yeah, it's, it's kind of whack. Oh, my own tweet. But I think you'll really like it. You don't hate to promote your own tweet. Andrew Tate fans, I got that dog in me. The dog. Anyway. um, I don't want to watch this today. I'll watch it. Uh, I'll probably watch it tomorrow. Because I am going to end the broadcast now. Because I did the podcast earlier today. And it's already 8. Coming near my bedtime. But I'll watch this tomorrow and we'll figure it out. All right, but the but that cucking video was crazy. Holy shit. That was definitely wild. No, I'm not gonna look at the fucking Dodge Charger. I'm not gonna look at the new fucking EV dog charger Dodge Charger. Oh my lord, dude. Oh my fucking lord. Y'all are, sometimes you guys are fucking ridiculous, dude. You just can't, can't stop yourself. Okay. Where was the, uh, the Maoist song that I was listening to? Um, last three minute ad break now. Oh, here it is. Dude, this song goes so fucking hard. Oh my god, dude. Why is it so stupid? Straight up. It's incredible. Anyway, guys, uh, tomorrow I will be live at the regular time after I work out. I've got a big fucking day. Uh, over the weekend, I have some fire content lined up with Super Mega. They're going to be coming on. I'm probably going to shoot a podcast with them if Will's not here or w whether Will's here or not. I'm probably going to shoot a podcast with those boys as well. I'm going to be on their podcast as well. Maybe I'll get a fucking uh, guest for tomorrow too. Maybe maybe I'll talk to Sneeko tomorrow. Who knows? We'll see. Matt and Ryan from Super Mega. That's right. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Love you all. Peace.